I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. I want to show you how to make custom map art today using Inkscape. And this is a project you can do even if you're new to Inkscape. I'll walk you through step by step so you can take data, map data we're going to get from OpenStreetMap for free, and I'll show you how you can manipulate it with the different tools and different methods in Inkscape. This is actually a follow-up tutorial to two earlier map projects I did. I've kind of refined some of the methods, and I'll answer some of the questions in the comments from those videos in this one so we can all move our skills forward. The subject for our project today is Okinawa, Japan, one of the most interesting places I've ever visited. Let's get started right away. For our document size, if you go to File, Document Properties, I'm using the A4 template. We'll be working outside of the page on the canvas here, but it's good to have as a reference for the scale. The map itself we're going to get from OpenStreetMap.org. It's a free resource for us and you can pretty much choose anywhere in the world that you want. It's defaulted at Boston for me, but we'll type in Okinawa, Japan, and you'll see it come up. If you go to their copyright page, it shows this is open source, it's free to use, as long as you credit OpenStreetMap properly like it says here, and it's on the Creative Commons license where you can adapt, remix, transform the information. And I'm back on the main page, Okinawa, Japan. Go over to the sidebar, and when you see these layers here, click that, and you'll see they do offer different views of the map. There's one with some topography, but we need to stay on standard because if you go down here to share, the only version of the map that it will allow us to download is standard. While we're here under image, change it to SVG. That's going to allow us to manipulate it inside of Inkscape. And for scale, I found a good ratio for our purposes today is one in 250,000. Before hit download, let's specify the area that we want to take out of this and bring into Inkscape. Right here, set custom dimensions. You'll see a box pop up. If you grab the dots, it lets you move the box. If you take one of the outside anchors, you can change the crop. I'm going to stick with the Okinawa chain of islands here. So I'll bring my box up, pull the shape out where I want it. And here's the second clarification from the previous videos. No matter what we choose for our custom dimensions for the download, it's going to grab a lot of this ocean. So much so that it gets confusing when you see it on the Inkscape canvas. So don't worry about that. I'll show you the workaround. Double check our space here. That looks good. Now I'll hit download. Load. Here it is, map four. Yours might say map one or map two if you accidentally downloaded a couple like I did. Drag this onto your desktop, go back to Inkscape, find an open area, and drag it off of your desktop into Inkscape. Here comes a pop up box, SVG import type. You want to be on the first choice, include SVG image as an editable object. DPI 300, image rendering mode, I changed to blocky optimized speed just from experimentation. Okay, my computer's starting to spin not responding that's okay i did choose enough data on the map to get the nice detailed roads that i wanted but you'll notice this your map that you bring in might be huge and start to crash inkscape so this is one of those projects we're going to save and save often and there it is there's the big ocean no matter what size cropping area you choose in open street map you're going to get a giant ocean be ready for that we still love you open street map in the previous videos the first thing we did was eliminate the ocean and now we want to keep the ocean because we're going to use it to our advantage click off so nothing is selected and to help us identify what we're actually holding go to object fill and stroke because nothing is selected you'll see nothing populating the fill and stroke menu if i double click on the ocean you may or may not get it on your first clicks try again i'm going to keep clicking until i see the fill turn blue like this all these diamonds you see these are the different nodes if you're new to inkscape the way it works is it's a vector program it's going to make shapes out of lots of little nodes like this we're going to skip multiple steps by using these nodes to create the outline of your country or island or whatever you're doing. I'll hold shift and gently collect the nodes. When they highlight, you know you have them. If you don't have these arrows up in the menu area, make sure this one here, the four corner arrows is selected. Otherwise you won't see those bounding boxes. Collect all of those nodes. I have them all just the way I want them. I'll go to edit, copy. Now I can hit escape. That will deselect those nodes, change over to selector tool. My hand will show up, delete. But wait a second, where's the outline? Scroll down into some open space, go back to edit, paste 
in place. You may not see it in the area that you're focused on right now, but if you zoom out, there it is. So in the previous videos, we spent a lot of time doing path effects to make the outline when it's as easy as just selecting the nodes, paste in place. And this is a vector object. You can change the color at will. We can now use this any way that we want. I'm gonna keep this one solid. Control D will duplicate it. Drag the other one over here. And this will make just an outline. Go over to stroke. Right now it says nothing. We'll click over to solid, change that to white stroke style. I'll do 0 0.40. Click over to the fill X out of that. Just like that, we have our base map. Now let's get all the data. The biggest change in my new method is rather than delete everything I don't want, I'm only going to take what I do want. Whether you clean this up by deleting or taking, the name of the game is figuring out what you're actually selecting. Let's do an easy one. Let's get this background out of here. I'll click once. It looks like I have it because on the fill and stroke menu, the fill is set to this tan and I'll push to Delete. Selecting with the mouse can be tricky. There's a couple cool tools under edit. Select same. You can select based on the fill and stroke, just the fill, just the stroke, styles, types of objects. As an example here, I'll take one of these ferry routes or whatever it is. When I choose it, nothing shows up under fill. So I think that means it's a stroke. Sure is. If I go to edit, select same, stroke color, it's going to collect the rest of them all at once. Delete. You can use that to clean up things by subtraction. Just click on the item, you know it's a stroke, edit, select same, stroke, delete. But today I'm gonna use it just to get all these roads. Zoom in, you can choose any parts of the map you wanna take for your art project. I want this gray part here. Selecting this portion tells me it's that stroke. We'll go to edit, select same, stroke color. Zoom back out, see what else we wanna take with us. I definitely want the airport and it's gonna be a good frame of reference to line everything up. I'll hold shift and I can now add to my selection. Maybe that's a fill, I'll click over to fill. It's not a fill, it's a stroke, but it must be a slightly different gray. Let's find out by going to edit, select same stroke color. It looks like that worked. Maybe it took some extra stuff as well, but that's all right. We'll zoom out all the way. Grab it carefully because you don't want to deselect and only take one. Let's bring it down here. Here's a tricky part. We want to now make it all uniform. For stroke paint, slide that to white. And I want everything to be the same weight. These two inputs get sticky. First, I'll try to do 1.0. And sure enough, when you go to change the units to millimeters, it goes back to 100%. Try again, millimeters, 1.0. And that worked. In the end, it'll look better if it's less than the width of the outline. So if the border is 0.40, all of this will have to come down. You can also see pretty clearly the paste in place for some reason changes the scale, but that's fine. Reselect all the roads that we want. Let's line the sizing up. I'll hold control and I can drag one of the corners to scale things things down, bring it closer. I think we should group it at this point, control G, and purposely change the color, which will help us line it up. Looking back at the big map, is there anything else that you want to bring? Maybe the airport marker, the major roadways. I am going to take this green area because I'm going to make an easy gradient using the shaded area on top of the map. With this light green fill selected, edit, select same fill color. This time I'll group it right now, control G, and slide this out of the way. Looking good and just like that, we can delete everything else and we'll notice an immediate performance bump, delete. Now Inkscape feels a lot better. I know it looks like a mess right now, but with this method, at this stage, you have all the pieces you need to change the color and make any different type of customized look that you want. I'm gonna change the base layer to the preset blue that I wanted. Color code right down here. I'm gonna line up the outline to the base manually and we'll use the airport as the frame of reference because I think the outline will match up well with the base, but the roads might be the wrong scale. So if we look at this part of the airport, if we get this correct, the rest of it will line up too. It's good for now. Let's go get the roads. Eyeballing it, you can see it doesn't line up exactly. Let's go down to the airport. And first of all, let's make it very narrow, 0.225, maybe 0.20. I think this will help with the sizing. You have to hold control or shift and control before you resize, otherwise you'll warp it vertically or horizontally. And that's pretty good. We're gonna keep going though. I wanna add the shading. The gradient we're gonna make is gonna start as plain white. And for speed, I'm gonna snap my fingers to get it sized into place. There's the time jump. One more thing to note, 
These right here are the hierarchy buttons. You can bring it up or down. I'll have it situated underneath the roads, back to white. And if you look over next to the flat color is linear gradient. Look at that. The default is the full base color you're on to full transparency. That's good for this project, but we want to modify the direction of the gradient. Inkscape 1.2 has a new gradient slider. And if you're looking for the old bar, it's on the toolbar. Create and edit gradients. You can move the starting point in the gradient to anywhere you want and adjust how far it goes. And right there, that is the star of the project, the main subject. I'm going to group all those pieces together, control G. And I was debating on making the backdrop, but I figured it's so simple, just rectangles. Slide that underneath. I want to bring in a little bit of interest in the background. And I was thinking maybe sampling something from Japanese art. There's a great free resource to get public domain images. It's called rawpixel.com. This is the famous painting or woodcut you might have seen. Hakusai's Great Wave. It actually is bigger than this. It has a Mount Fuji here. But all we need today is this vertical part. I already downloaded it. And let's bring this in and make a vector out of it. One of the best tools that Inkscape has is Trace Bitmap. It's one of the features that brings people to Inkscape. Go up to Path, Trace Bitmap. I'm on Single Scan, Detection Mode, Brightness Cutoff. This is my Threshold Slider, and here's the preview of what you're going to get. I want to capture the wave portion and the outline of the crest here. So this looks good almost at default. Maybe lighten it a little bit. I'm at 0 0.370, Speckles, Smooth Corners, Optimize, All Selected, Apply. While it spins for a little bit, I always mention when you bring in a source image, if it's really, really large, you might induce a crash or you'll have this not responding. This isn't too big, so it should pop up in a second. There it goes. I can take the new selection. This is the vector object we made. We can say bye to the original and you can change the colors. Take a look at all the nodes. If I drop this underneath directly, it's a bit harsh. You can experiment with colors, but I know I'm going to go just gray. This might be too subtle, but I really want the focus to be the map and the wave can just be some texture in the background. Can't have the runoff. Grab your rectangle tool and let's create a clipping box pretty much up to the perimeter. Do a transparent green just so you can see through it and green out of habit. You know you have the green clipping box selected. Hold shift, grab your wave, object, clip, set clip. And where's my label? That's how you do it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any suggestions on other maps or any Inkscape questions, hope I can help and see you next time.